this model does a nice job of showing us on the cranial floor what's going on in terms of blood supply. And very briefly, what you can see here is the vertebral arteries leading up to the basilar artery, which leads up into a structure called the cerebral arterial circle, or the circle of Willis. Now what you see here is the posterior half of the circle of Willis. We have the posterior cerebral arteries, left and right. We have the posterior communicating arteries, left and right. And we have the internal carotid artery, left and right. This would be left side, this would be right side, that have been cut. And obviously this is just the posterior half of that circle of Willis. Now, if we look at this model here, and you imagine this one sitting right inside here, just like that, that means when I pop this off, okay, the internal carotid arteries that we have here again, like this, are the internal carotid arteries that we have right here. So internal carotid arteries. Now I'm showing you an anterior view here. So this would be the right internal. This would be the left internal carotid artery. If we turn this to the side a little bit, you can see the middle cerebral artery. This is going to go through the middle of your brain, the middle cerebral and all the branches that come off of that. Same thing on this side, middle cerebral artery. And then what you also see starting to complete the circle. Remember we saw the posterior half of the circle here. We're starting to see the anterior portion of the circle right here. Um, what we have here are the anterior cerebral arteries anterior cerebral arteries. Uh, so that's the blood supply that you see on this one. Another really nice thing about this model though is the cranial nerves. You can see the cranial nerves very easily on this. So I'm actually going to start again at the top of this and kind of work my way down here. But we're going to start with the optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. Okay, so the optic nerve, cranial nerve number two, is what you'd see on both sides right here. Uh, this is the hypothesis of the pituitary gland. If we look just underneath this right here, a uh, little bit on this side, you can see it a little bit right over here as well. This is the oculomotor nerve. That's cranial nerve number three. If I turn this around to the posterior side, we can start to see cranial nerve number four. This is the trochlear nerve. Trochlear nerve is that one right there. And then we get to this big one, the trigeminal. So the trigeminal is this, here, this is the pons. The trigeminal is that big one on the pons right there. So we can see two, three, three on this side as well, four, five. And then if you go to the inferior side of the pons here, we can go from medial to lateral and see six, seven, eight. So this is going to number six, this is gonna be the abducens. Number seven, this is facial. Number eight, this is vestibular cochlear. I know it looks like I'm pointing at two right here, but that's just both branches of vestibular cochlear. Then we work our way down here, nine, 10, 11. That's going to be glossopharyngeal. Uh, vagus is 10, the accessory or spinal accessory is 11, and then we come back up to number 12. And of course, number 12 is the hypoglossal. So if you follow the pattern and you kind of work your way down and middle and out and back up, right? Starting with two, this would be optic, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, then back up to 12. Same thing on this side. 2, 3, 4, 5 is the big one on the pons. Then from medial to lateral, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, back up to 12. 12 is where you finish that hypoglossal. So this is sort of the diencephalon, diencephalon and the brain stem. And again, you can see these cranial nerves here.